Hello, YouTube world. It's me, Jordan, again for another Google Apps Scripting video. Um, I asked yesterday, after kind of doing my little Google Sites custom domain video, whether people wanted to actually cared about um, CSS on this channel or whether it should just stick to the Google Apps Script. And 60, 40 out of 10, 10 people in 24 hours said uh, Google Apps Scripting is the way to go. So that kind of uh, made me think, how can I restyle these uh, couple of forms that I just kind of threw together on this uh, site, these little embedded web apps? How can I restyle those without really doing any CSS? And of course, the answer is to use something like Bootstrap or another popular one is Foundation but to kind of match the Google Sites style, right? Like this, um, come back over here, this uh, material design is what it's called. We can use just material design itself. Uh, and it's pretty simple to set up, but we're gonna go through the process of setting it up and then kind of throwing some components together. So what I've decided to use is material design light, uh, getmdl.io, which actually, is a project it's no longer being built because they're focusing on the main material.io package and development for a lot of different tools however for google apps script since we are going to be referencing the packages from a from library files it really helps to have them on a cdn as is done right here so we're gonna actually take these and get started. We're gonna take these, we'll duplicate one of these buttons and see what we have. So here is our setup in a brand new index.html. We've got two CDNs, well, and the script itself refers to a CDN and the button itself. And when we open that, we can see it right here. Now. The other thing that is missing is our font. We wanna use the Roboto font, which is a sans serif, I believe. Easy enough, we just copy that over. It's from the Google fonts and we save that. Next up, we wanna change these colors. And another reason for choosing Material Design Lite is they make it super easy to do. They have a bunch of different CDNs that you can customize and just replace here. This material.indigo slash pink can just be replaced with the colors that you want. The web page has a great color wheel for doing exactly that. Just click on the colors that you want to see in your package and it'll give you the CDN at the bottom. I'm going to choose, I like this teal and deep orange, I don't know, red. I think you're supposed to go like on opposite sides of the color wheel, those are complementary. I'm not, oh no, I, it shows my knowledge about design color picking. Um, that looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and grab that link code. Oh no, I can't get it. And we replace that in here. save everything. Now I'm going to move over the components that I need to match what I had originally. I need two text boxes, a text area, this little toggle and a submit button. So let's do that now. So there we go. I, inside of my form, I'm going to remove this action actually because I'm handling everything with JavaScript. So I've duplicated the text field. Then I added a text area. I should just highlight the input itself. I added a toggle or a checkbox really, and then a submit button, type submit, which then links up down inside of the script tag. I can space this out more. It's really weird of me. I don't normally do that. I just wrapped, I wrapped all of my JavaScript inside of curly braces. Um, that is to replace the kind of the old school way of of writing your script tags. All I have in here is an on submit function that gets attached to the form submit listener, and that just prevents the page from reloading. 
which was what that action was doing up there. It was um, you can tell the form to to handle your those things automatically. Well, I'm gonna save it. So I've got all of the pieces here. It's pretty ugly right now, but that's not a problem. We can fix that in a moment. And when I click the button, submits the form, and it does not refresh the page. Perfect. Next up, let's add a few styles just to put everything in the right place. We can use CSS Grid to do that. And that way we can match our original form. So let's get our HTML a little more cleaned up. Completely unrelated to the layout of the form, which is what we're gonna fix here in a moment. I just wanna do a couple of things just totally unrelated. I wanna remove that ending slash, which is unnecessary to the HTML. I'm gonna remove this script tag and put it at the bottom, just above the script tag that we're that we're writing here just to kind of keep things in the right place and then in its place here i'm going to open a style tag and close it this is where we're going to put our styles which we're going to declare right here we can go ahead and do it even though we're not going to finish this out let's just go ahead and get form display grid and we're going to fix that in a moment now, down in our form itself, let's start, let's put some names on these inputs. I'm gonna call this name. And the very first thing should be full name. I'm gonna use camel case. I'm gonna change the ID to match. And I'm gonna do the exact same for the rest of these divs. Okay, so I think I've got all those names correct. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a div around this button. And that's just so that the button size doesn't get pulled mm -hmm. by the uh, display grid. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna kind of manipulate the placement of these elements using the CSS grid. I'm going to link this article on CSSTricks.com about the uh, what's called the complete guide to grid. Real simple way for us to do this. Let me refresh. Let's see where we are right now. Okay, perfect. It's all in line, which I guess could be kind of fine, but I think we want to make it responsive. So. Let's try a few things. Display grid, let's do grid template columns. Let's make it two fractional columns. And now you'll see we've got two columns here. Perfect. Another thing is I haven't put any padding on the side. You might notice there's no margin or anything. And that's because we're gonna eventually embed this in the website and that will handle all of that. So we want it to kind of go right up to the edge of our window. So now we need to define the placement of this text area and then the placement of this checkbox and this button. So I created a CSS rule for message text area and I gave it grid column one with a span of two to take up both columns and then a width of 100%. And then I came down and I put that message text area class on my text area. The result is now a text area that will go the full two columns. Now let's do the same thing for this checkbox and my send message button. Okay, so I added a few more styles just to put these, the checkbox and the button in the right place. And then I put a real simple media query so that when I resize down with starts to collapse into each row and that i think is gonna be it for this because now it's as simple as just publishing a new version i probably should have put a description there 
And when I come back over to my website, you'll see I've got these styles already there. Looks so much better now. Now there's still, uh, I kind of don't like that these don't go to the correct places, but all of that can be fixed. And it's just as simple as making a few small changes to my web app and then publishing them from there. And it appears right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep uh, fine tuning this and hope that you can experiment with this yourself. I will talk to you soon. Cheers.